Reflecting on the enduring popularity of MASH, it's worth noting the success of the show's follow-up after MASH. This TV series continued the story of some beloved characters from the original show, bringing laughter and heart to living rooms across the country. Set in a veteran's hospital, after MASH explored the challenges and triumphs of readjusting to civilian life after wartime, the show's ability to balance humor and drama made it a worthy successor to the classic MASH. Despite airing for only two seasons, after MASH left a lasting impact on fans and solidified its place in television history. After the beloved show MASH came to an end, fans were hopeful for a spin-off to keep the story going. Their hopes were realized with After MASH, a 30-minute sitcom that aired on NBC for two seasons, from 1983 to 1984. The show served as a direct sequel to MASH, taking place in a veteran's hospital in the United States. After MASH featured several beloved characters from the original show, including Colonel Potter, played by Harry Morgan, Max Klinger, portrayed by Jamie Farr, and Father Mulcahy, played by William Christopher. The show focused on these characters as they adjusted to life after the Korean War, bringing a new perspective to the MASH universe. Set in a hospital, after MASH showcased the struggles and triumphs of veterans as they navigated their new lives. The show explored themes of friendship, resilience, and healing, providing a unique and heartwarming look at the lives of these beloved characters. After MASH may not have reached the same level of success as its predecessor, but it remains a classic in its own right. The show's 30 episodes provided fans with a much-needed continuation of the MASH story, allowing them to see what became of their favorite characters after the war. In conclusion, After MASH was a beloved spin-off that brought a new perspective to the MASH universe. Set in a veteran's hospital, the show explored themes of friendship, resilience, and healing, providing a unique and heartwarming look at the lives of beloved characters. While it may not have reached the same level of success as the original show, after MASH remains a classic in its own right, providing fans with a much-needed continuation of the MASH story. After the successful run of the hit series MASH, producers were eager to continue the story. They knew that three of the original cast members, including Jamie Farr, William Christopher, and Harry Morgan, were interested in exploring the world of MASH further. However, other primary cast members declined to join a spin-off series. In an effort to create a compelling new show, CBS approached Larry Gelbart, the co-creator and showrunner of MASH, to lead the spin-off series. Gelbart was excited about the opportunity to delve back into the MASH universe and try his hand at a new show. The new series, titled After MASH, followed the lives of Colonel Potter, Father Mulcahy, and Corporal Klinger as they adjusted to life after the Korean War. The show aimed to capture the same humor and heart that made MASH a beloved classic. Despite Gelbart's involvement, after MASH struggled to find its footing and was ultimately canceled after two seasons. However, the show remains a notable part of television history as a spin-off of one of the most successful series of all time. In the end, After MASH serves as a reminder of the challenges of creating a successful spin-off and the importance of striking the right balance between familiarity and innovation. The classic TV series After MASH was brought to life by a creative team that included Gene Reynolds, Howard Gelbart, Burt Metcalf, David Isaacs, Dennis Koenig, and Ken Levine. Together, they crafted the first 13 scripts of this beloved show. The cast of After MASH was led by Harry Morgan, reprising his role as Colonel Sherman T. Potter and Jamie Farr as Maxwell Klinger. Joining them were new talents such as Rosalind Kao, who played Soon Lee Klinger, and Barbara Townsend, who took on the role of Major Margaret Houlihan. Additionally, Brandis Kemp, John Chappelle and J.O. Sanders were also cast in this series, bringing their unique talents to the screen. Each of these actors contributed to the success of Aftermash, making it a memorable and beloved show for many viewers. In summary, the creative team and cast of Aftermash worked together to create a compelling and entertaining show that has stood the test of time. With its talented writers and actors, this classic TV series continues to be a favorite among older adults. In 1983, a new 30-minute sitcom named After MASH made its debut on television screens. This series had a significant financial investment behind it, with each episode costing a staggering $500,000 to produce. This price tag made it the most expensive half-hour comedy show to date. The high production cost was primarily due to the show's intricate set designs and the need to maintain a talented cast and crew. Despite the substantial financial commitment, After MASH had a lot going for it. It boasted a massive built-in fan base, thanks to its connection to the wildly popular series MASH. 
The show's creators were confident that the loyal viewership of MASH would translate well to Aftermash. Their confidence was well-founded, as Aftermash quickly became a hit among audiences. In its first season, the show achieved an impressive average 20.1 Nielsen rating, which placed it as the 11th highest rated show of the 1983-84 season. This success demonstrated that the show had struck a chord with viewers and solidified its place in the annals of television history. The show's initial success can be attributed to several factors, including its talented cast and the appeal of its relatable storylines. The characters were well-developed, and the show's writers did an excellent job of balancing humor with more serious themes. The result was a show that resonated with audiences and kept them coming back for more. In summary, Aftermash was a groundbreaking 30-minute sitcom that debuted in 1983 with a 500000 price tag per episode, making it the highest-costing half-hour comedy to date. With a built-in fan base from MASH, the show quickly became a hit, achieving an average 20.1 Nielsen rating in its first season, making it the 11th highest-rated show of 1983-85. After the successful run of MASH, the spin-off series After MASH made its debut in 1983. The show picked up where its predecessor left off focusing on the lives of three beloved characters from the 4077th Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. Aftermash brought a new perspective to the small screen, focusing on the challenges that these characters faced as they readjusted to civilian life. One unique aspect of Aftermash was the opportunity it offered viewers to become a lord or lady with a purchase of a title pack and land in Scotland. This creative promotion allowed fans to feel more connected to the show and its characters, adding an extra layer of excitement to the viewing experience. As Aftermash entered its second season, it faced new challenges. CBS moved the show to compete with the A-Team, leading to a decline in ratings. Despite the competition, the show continued to deliver engaging storylines and relatable characters, but it struggled to maintain its viewership. In summary, Aftermash was a spin-off series that brought a fresh perspective to the lives of beloved MASH characters. The show's unique promotion allowed viewers to become lords and ladies, adding an exciting element to the viewing experience. However, as the show entered its second season, it faced challenges as CBS moved it to compete with the A-Team, leading to a decline in ratings. Despite these challenges, Aftermash remained a classic example of a successful spin-off series. In the aftermath of the successful series MASH, CBS attempted to recreate the original show's magic by recasting certain parts and reintroducing kooky elements in the spin-off series after MASH. The network hoped to capture the same charm by bringing back characters like Klinger's cross-dressing antics and Colonel Flag. Unfortunately, these efforts did not translate into success. The ratings for after MASH plummeted after the season premiere, leading to its untimely cancellation on October 24, 1984. The network's attempts to recreate the original show's vibe fell short, and the audience's response reflected this. The sudden cancellation of Aftermash was a disappointment for fans who had hoped to see more of their favorite characters. The show's failure to resonate with audiences serves as a reminder of the challenges in creating a successful spin-off. Despite the best efforts of the network and the show's creators, Aftermash was unable to mark its place in television history. In the wake of the successful series MASH, its spin-off Aftermash premiered in 1983, featuring Jamie Farr and Harry Morgan. Both actors had already established themselves as popular figures in the television landscape. In fact, they were among the top 10 most popular TV actors at the time, while Alan Alda held the number one spot. Jamie Farr, who played the lovable character Max Klinger in MASH, was a favorite among viewers. His charm and comedic timing were a perfect fit for the show's tone. Similarly, Harry Morgan, who portrayed the stern but caring Colonel Potter, had won over audiences with his no-nonsense attitude and dry wit. Despite the popularity of Farr and Morgan, Aftermash struggled to maintain viewership without Alan Alda's character, Hawkeye Pierce. The show's creators had hoped that the established fan base of MASH would carry over to the spin-off, but the absence of Alda proved to be a significant loss. The Q scores, which measure the popularity and appeal of TV stars, reflected this disparity. While Farr and Morgan remained high on the list, the show's overall ratings suffered without Alda's presence. It seemed that the chemistry and camaraderie between the original MASH cast members were irreplaceable. After MASH attempted to recreate the magic of its predecessor by focusing on the lives of the characters after the Korean War, 
However, without Aldous Hawkeye, the show lacked the heart and soul that had made MASH such a beloved classic. In the end, after MASH only lasted two seasons before being cancelled. While Jamie Farr and Harry Morgan remained popular actors in their own right, their chemistry with Alan Alda proved to be a crucial element in the success of MASH. Without him, after MASH couldn't quite capture the same magic. The absence of Alan Alda, who played Hawkeye Pierce in MASH, was deeply felt in the spin-off series after MASH. Audiences found it hard to embrace a MASH show without Alda's presence, leading to a less enthusiastic response in the long run. Another spin-off project titled Walter was also met with disappointment. This show focused on Corporal Radar O'Reilly, played by Gary Berghoff, as he transitioned into a new career as a police officer. Unfortunately, Walter failed to capture the hearts of viewers, resulting in its swift cancellation. Before the production of Walter, Berghoff reprised his role as Radar in Aftermash for a brief period. Despite his return, the show's inability to recreate the magic of MASH without Alda ultimately led to its downfall. In essence, the audience's reaction to Aftermash was tepid, and the Walter spin-off was a disaster. The absence of key characters and the challenges of continuing a beloved series proved to be insurmountable obstacles for these classic television shows. After the groundbreaking success of MASH, producers decided to explore the potential of Walter O'Reilly, one of the show's beloved characters in a TV movie. However, the film didn't resonate with audiences and failed to secure a series order. This outcome was quite surprising, considering MASH's enduring impact on television history. MASH, which aired from 1972 to 1983, was a trailblazer in many ways. Its superb acting, exceptional writing, and innovative production techniques set it apart from other shows of the time. The series tackled complex themes and emotions, often transcending the boundaries of its military setting. It became a testament to the human spirit's resilience amidst adversity, leaving a lasting mark on the television landscape. When the decision was made to create a TV movie centered around Walter, fans had high hopes. Unfortunately, the film didn't live up to expectations. The magic that made MASH one of the best shows in history seemed to be missing. Nevertheless, the legacy of MASH endures, and its influence can still be felt in contemporary television. The classic series paved the way for future shows to delve into deeper, more meaningful storytelling. Its ability to weave humor and drama together while addressing complex social issues remains an inspiration for many television writers and producers today. Despite the disappointing outcome of the Walter-centric TV movie, MASH's impact on the world of television remains undeniable. Spin-offs of popular TV series often have high expectations to meet, and after MASH was no exception. As a spin-off of the hit series MASH, there was potential for it to be a major hit. However, TV ratings can be unpredictable, and network meddling can often backfire, leading to a show's downfall. After MASH faced several issues that contributed to its decline. One of the major problems was that CBS decided to compete with the A-Team, which was a ratings powerhouse at the time. This decision led to Aftermash being scheduled in a less desirable time slot, which had a negative impact on its ratings. Another issue that Aftermash faced was excessive changes. The show underwent significant changes in its cast and tone, which alienated some of the original MASH fanbase. The changes were made in an attempt to appeal to a broader audience, but they ultimately had the opposite effect. The show's original concept was to focus on the characters of Colonel Potter, Father Mulcahy, and Klinger as they adjust to life after the Korean War. However, the addition of new characters and the departure of some of the original cast members led to a shift in the show's tone. The lighthearted and comedic elements that were present in MASH were largely absent in Aftermash, which focused more on drama and serious issues. Despite these issues, Aftermash still had its moments of brilliance. The show's writers were able to tackle serious issues such as PTSD, aging, and the challenges of readjusting to civilian life. The cast, which included Harry Morgan, William Christopher, and Jamie Farr, all gave solid performances. In the end, Aftermash was unable to live up to the high expectations set by its predecessor. The show's unpredictable ratings and network meddling led to its downfall. However, it still remains a classic in its own right, with a loyal fanbase that appreciates its unique take on the MASH universe. Walter's failure as a character in Aftermash might be attributed to the fact that the characters had simply run their course. The show, a spin-off of the wildly popular MASH, followed the lives of three characters after the Korean War. 
Walter O'Reilly, or Radar as he was known in MASH, was one of those characters. At the end of MASH, Radar was a beloved and integral part of the show. His departure in the series finale was emotional and heartfelt attendant, however. When after MASH premiered, Radar was a different person. Gone was the innocent, wide-eyed country boy, and his place was a more cynical and world-weary man. This change in character may have been jarring for fans of MASH. Additionally, the premise of Aftermash was not as strong as that of its predecessor. While MASH was set in a war zone and dealt with the harsh realities of war, Aftermash was set in a veteran's hospital and focused on the character's adjustment to civilian life. This shift in tone and setting may have contributed to Walter's failure as a character. Moreover, the other two main characters in Aftermash, Colonel Potter, and Father Mulcahy also seemed to have lost some of their charm and appeal. The chemistry and camaraderie that had defined MASH were missing in after MASH. The show struggled to find its footing and was ultimately cancelled after two seasons. In conclusion, Walter's failure as a character in after MASH was likely due to a combination of factors. The characters, including Walter, had run their course and were not as compelling as they had been in MASH. The show's premise and tone were also different from MASH which may have been a turnoff for fans. Ultimately, Aftermash was unable to capture the magic of its predecessor, and Walter's character suffered as a result. Aftermash, the 1983 TV series following the hit show MASH, left a significant impact on audiences and television history. The show continued the story of three beloved MASH characters exploring their lives after the Korean War. While it only ran for two seasons, Aftermash contributed to the ongoing conversation about the challenges veterans face when reintegrating into society. The show's focus on mental health, camaraderie, and the lasting effects of war resonated with viewers, making it a relevant and important part of the MASH franchise. The series also demonstrated the power of spin-offs, paving the way for similar shows that continue stories of beloved characters. Its unique blend of comedy and drama set in a hospital environment can still be seen in modern medical comedies and dramas. Today, Aftermash remains relevant as a reminder of the struggles veterans face and the importance of mental health support. Its influence on television storytelling and spin-offs keeps its legacy alive as new generations discover and appreciate this classic. The casting process for Aftermash, a 1983 TV series, was a careful selection of talents to continue the MASH storyline. Each actor brought something unique to their role shaping the show's dynamic. For Colonel Potter's role, they wanted a seasoned actor. Noble Willingham, with his extensive stage and screen experience, was a natural fit. His chemistry with the cast was undeniable, making him an ideal choice. Sherman T. Potter's character needed a softer side, which they found in Jamie Farr. Having played Max Klinger in M.A.S.H., Farr was already familiar with the show's tone. His comedic timing and ability to balance humor with drama made him a perfect addition Finding the right actor to play Father Mulcahy was challenging. William Christopher, known for his work in both film and television, won the part. His ability to portray warmth and compassion resonated with the character's nature. The role of Klinger's wife Laverne went to Rosalind Kao. She had previously worked with Farr, and their on-screen chemistry added depth to Klinger's character. As for the new characters, Mike Farrell recommended his friend, David Aykroyd, for the role of Colonel Schaefer. Aykroyd's stern but fair demeanor fit the character perfectly. Lastly, they needed a strong female lead. They found this in Anne Skadeen, who played Colonel Potter's daughter Alma. Her performance added a fresh perspective to the show. These actors, through auditions and chemistry tests, proved to be the perfect fit for Aftermash, creating a memorable continuation of the MASH saga. The directors of the 1983 TV series Aftermash brought their unique vision and creativity to the small screen. One such director was Alan Alda, who was already well known for his role in M.A.S.H. Alda's directorial style was characterized by his ability to bring out the best in his cast, as well as his attention to detail. Alda was heavily influenced by the work of Italian neorealist filmmakers, such as Vittorio De Sica and Roberto Rossellini. He admired their ability to tell compelling stories using non-professional actors and naturalistic settings. Alda aimed to bring this same sense of realism to after M.A.S.H., using location shoots and natural lighting to create a more authentic atmosphere. Collaboration was key to Alda's approach. He worked closely with the cast and crew, encouraging improvisation and experimentation. Alda believed that the best performances came from a place of trust and openness, and he fostered a supportive environment on set. 
One of Aldo's most notable contributions to Aftermash was his ability to find humor in everyday situations. He believed that comedy should come from a place of truth and humanity, and he worked to ensure that the humor in the show never felt forced or contrived. In addition to Alda, other directors who worked on Aftermash included Burt Metcalf and Charles S. Dubin. Both men brought their own unique perspectives and styles to the show, but they shared Alda's commitment to collaboration and realism. Metcalf, who had worked on MASH as a producer and director, brought a deep understanding of the show's characters and tone to Aftermash. He worked to ensure that the spin-off felt like a natural extension of the original series, while still bringing something new and fresh to the table. Dubin, who had directed episodes of All in the Family, and The Jeffersons, brought a sitcom sensibility to Aftermash. He was known for his ability to elicit strong performances from his cast, and he worked to ensure that each episode had a clear structure and pacing. Together, these directors helped to bring Aftermash to life, creating a show that was both funny and heartfelt, and which resonated with audiences. Their collaborative approach, attention to detail, and commitment to realism helped to create a show that still holds up today. The production of the 1983 TV series Aftermash took viewers back to the familiar setting of the 4077th MASH unit, now converted into a veterans hospital. The set design was a crucial element in creating this new environment. Production designers transformed the original MASH set, adding hospital wings, a nursing station, and patient rooms. They meticulously selected period-appropriate furniture, medical equipment, and uniforms to ensure authenticity. Filming for Aftermash took place primarily on the 20th Century Fox Studios lot in Los Angeles. The lot offered various sound stages and backlot areas, providing the necessary space for the large MASH set. However, logistical challenges arose due to the size of the set and the need to accommodate both the cast and crew. Careful planning and coordination were essential to ensure smooth filming operations. One innovative technique employed during the production of Aftermash was the use of video assist technology. This technology allowed the director and crew to review footage immediately after filming, enabling them to make quick decisions regarding reshoots or adjustments. By expediting the editing process, video assist technology significantly improved production efficiency. In addition to video assist technology, Aftermash also utilized state-of-the-art sound recording equipment. The production team employed a multi-track recording system, which allowed for the separate recording of dialogue, sound effects, and music. This approach resulted in higher quality audio and facilitated post-production editing. Despite the challenges of filming a TV series on a large set, the production team of Aftermash successfully recreated the beloved MASH universe. Through innovative techniques and technologies, they managed to create an engaging and authentic viewing experience for audiences. The creation of a film score and soundtrack is a meticulous process that requires collaboration between composers, musicians, and filmmakers. In the 1983 TV series Aftermash, the music played a crucial role in complementing the narrative and emotional tone of the show. Composer Johnny Harris was tasked with creating the musical score for Aftermath. With an extensive background in composing for film and television, Harris was no stranger to the art of crafting music that enhances a story's emotional impact. He drew inspiration from the show's setting and characters to create a score that resonated with viewers. Harris's music for Aftermath was primarily orchestral, featuring lush strings, poignant woodwinds, and powerful brass. The score served to heighten the emotional stakes of the series, providing a rich backdrop for the characters' struggles and triumphs. According to Harris, the music needed to be able to stand on its own, but also support and enhance the story being told on screen. Meanwhile, the soundtrack featured popular songs from the early 1980s, further grounding the series in its historical context. Music supervisor Bud Carr worked closely with the show's creators to select songs that complemented the narrative and emotional tone of each episode. Carr's choices were often eclectic, ranging from soft rock ballads to upbeat pop tunes. These songs serve to underscore the characters' experiences and emotions, providing a relatable soundtrack for viewers to connect with. The collaboration between Harris, Carr, and the show's creators resulted in a musical tapestry that enhanced the storytelling of Aftermath. The score and soundtrack worked in tandem to create a captivating audio experience that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact. In the end, the music of Aftermath served as a testament to the power of collaboration and the importance of music and storytelling. Through its evocative score 
and carefully curated soundtrack, the series was able to create a rich and immersive world that continues to resonate with viewers today. One of the most iconic scenes in Aftermath is found in the episode titled Fade Out, Fade In. In this scene, Colonel Potter is preparing to leave the 4077th for the final time. As he walks through the empty hospital tent, he shares a heartfelt goodbye with the ghost of his dear friend, Henry Blake. The direction in this scene is masterful. The use of long, slow takes allows the audience to fully absorb the emotional weight of the moment. The tent is dimly lit, casting elongated shadows and creating a somber atmosphere. The performances are equally powerful. Harry Morgan's portrayal of Colonel Potter is filled with raw emotion as he grapples with the reality of leaving behind a place that has become his home. The unseen presence of Henry Blake, played by the late McLean Stevenson, is palpable, adding a layer of depth to the scene. Cinematography plays a crucial role in setting the tone. The camera work is steady and deliberate, mirroring Colonel Potter's steady and deliberate steps. The use of close-ups on Colonel Potter's face allows the audience to see the pain and sadness in his eyes. This scene has had a lasting impact on the audience. It serves as a poignant reminder of the sacrifices made by those who serve in the military and the bonds that are formed in the face of adversity. The scene has been praised by both fans and critics and is often cited as one of the most memorable moments in the series. In an interview, Harry Morgan spoke about the impact of this scene, stating, it was a very emotional scene to film, and I think it really resonated with our audience. It's a scene that I'm very proud to have been a part of. The scene is a testament to the power of storytelling and the ability of television to evoke emotion and create lasting memories. It is a scene that has transcended the boundaries of time and will continue to be remembered for years to come. Aftermash, a TV series that aired in 1983, left a significant cultural and social impact. The show served as a sequel to the popular series MASH and focused on the lives of three characters after the Korean War. The series resonated with audiences due to its relatable and humorous portrayal of the challenges veterans face when reintegrating into society. It provided a sense of comfort and familiarity to viewers who had grown attached to the characters during their time in the war. Moreover, Aftermash contributed to discussions on relevant social themes, such as the impact of war on mental health and the difficulties of readjusting to civilian life. The show explored these issues with sensitivity and nuance, helping to raise awareness and understanding of these challenges. In terms of pop culture, Aftermash inspired a wave of spin-off series and sequels, demonstrating the potential for TV shows to continue and evolve beyond their original run. The show also showcased the talents of its diverse cast, including Jamie Farr, Harry Morgan, and William Christopher, who brought depth and humanity to their characters. Overall, Aftermash left a lasting impact on TV and popular culture, shedding light on important social issues and providing audiences with a relatable and entertaining viewing experience. Its legacy continues to be felt today as TV shows and storytelling continue to evolve and expand. Aftermash, a spin-off of the successful series MASH, received mixed reviews from critics and audiences when it premiered in 1983. The show followed the lives of three characters from the original series as they adjusted to life after the Korean War. Critics were divided on the quality of Aftermash. Some praised the show for its humor and heart, while others felt it failed to live up to the high standards set by MASH. In a review for the New York Times, John J. O'Connor wrote, Aftermash is not a bad show but it is a disappointing one. He criticized the lack of chemistry between the new cast members and felt the show lacked the depth of its predecessor. Despite the mixed reviews, After Mash was a rating success and became one of the top rated shows of the 1983-1984 season. Audiences seemed to enjoy the continuation of the Mash storyline and the introduction of new characters. After Mash received one award nomination during its run. In 1984, series star Jamie Farr was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Supporting Actor in a Series, Miniseries, or Television Film. While Farr did not win the award, the nomination was a testament to his talent and popularity with audiences. The accolades received by Aftermash, including its strong ratings and award nominations, were important for those involved in the show. For the cast and crew, the success of the series validated their hard work and dedication to the project. Additionally, the positive reception from audiences helped to ensure the show's longevity and success. Overall, while After Mash may not have been as critically acclaimed as Mash, it was still a successful and beloved series in its own right.
The show's accolades are a testament to the talent and dedication of those involved and the enduring appeal of the MASH storyline. During the filming of After MASH, the spin-off series of the beloved MASH, some memorable moments occurred behind the scenes. For instance, actor Jamie Farr, who reprised his role as Max Klinger, would often entertain the crew with his impersonations between takes. His impressions of famous celebrities, including Humphrey Bogart and Jimmy Stewart, brought laughter and lightheartedness to the set. The camaraderie among the cast was also noteworthy. Co-stars William Christopher and Harry Morgan frequently played chess together during breaks, creating a friendly and supportive atmosphere. Their genuine affection for each other translated well onto the screen, contributing to the show's warm and inviting tone. Additionally, the set of Aftermash was designed to be as authentic as possible. The production team went to great lengths to recreate the familiar interiors of the 4077 MASH unit, even incorporating pieces of furniture and props from the original series. This meticulous attention to detail helped the new cast and crew feel connected to the legacy of MASH and created a sense of continuity for viewers. One particularly touching moment occurred when a group of MASH fans visited the set during filming. Overwhelmed by the opportunity to meet their favorite actors, the fans became emotional and tears were shed. Touched by their outpouring of affection, the Aftermash cast and crew took the time to chat with the fans, sign autographs, and pose for photographs, creating a truly unforgettable experience for everyone involved. These anecdotes offer a glimpse into the warm, lighthearted, and dedicated atmosphere that pervaded the making of Aftermash. The cast and crew's genuine affection for each other and the original series combined with their commitment to creating an authentic and entertaining experience for viewers made the production of Aftermash a truly special experience. Aftermash, a sitcom that aired from 1983 to 1985, holds a unique place in film history as it was the first spin-off of the successful series MASH. The show continued the story of three beloved characters from the original series, Colonel Potter, Father Mulcahy, and Klinger, as they adjusted to life after the Korean War in a military hospital in Missouri. While Aftermash was not as critically acclaimed or commercially successful as its predecessor, it still had an impact on future filmmaking. The show's creators took a risk by continuing the story of established characters in a new setting, a concept that has since been replicated in numerous spin-offs and revivals. Moreover, Aftermash was one of the earliest examples of a sitcom that tackled serious issues such as post-traumatic stress disorder and aging, making it a trailblazer in its genre. The show's willingness to address these topics paved the way for future television programs to explore similar themes. The legacy of Aftermash can also be seen in the careers of its cast members. For instance, Jamie Farr, who played Klinger, continued to act in various television shows and movies, becoming a beloved figure in American pop culture. In conclusion, while Aftermash may not be as well known as other television shows from the 1980s, its influence can still be felt in the world of film and television today. The show's innovative approach to storytelling and its willingness to tackle serious issues have left a lasting impact on the industry and continue to inspire filmmakers to this day. Did Aftermash leave a lasting impression on you? We'd love to hear your stories and memories from 1983, as this series may have impacted your life or influenced your perspective on cinema. How did this show make you feel? What moments stood out to you? Share your thoughts and engage with us by liking, sharing, and subscribing for more cinematic explorations. Perhaps you recall specific characters or storylines that resonated with you. Maybe Aftermash even inspired you to explore other TV shows or films. We're excited to learn about the personal connections our viewers have with this series. So, don't hesitate to reach out and start a conversation. Let's reminisce about Aftermash.